Our scripture today is uh, from uh, the second chapter of, uh, our first chapter of Matthew, the 18th verse um, uh, forward. Um, I, I invite you to, to look at it, and I, I'm going to make some comments. Uh, now, the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, they, they want you to know right from the get-go that Jesus is the Messiah that was promised by the prophets of old and was looked forward to by all Jews and really by many Greeks as well. Messiah is a Hebrew word. The Greek word for Messiah is Christ. So when you say Jesus Christ, you're proclaiming that Jesus is the Messiah. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, uh, that's not quite right. Before, uh, when, when his mother Mary was betrothed. A betrothal is different than an engagement. A betrothal is actually a contract that's been, solved, that's been assigned by two families that this person and this person are going to get married at some future date. And you can't undo it unless you have a divorce. Um, but they weren't living together. She was at her mother's house. He was at his own house. But they were promised to each other. Uh, before, uh, or, or when his mother was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together. They, 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 they would want to make this clear now. They did not live together. <laughs> uh, uh, she was found to be with child. And then the editor adds, so you won't misunderstand, because we're not to the end of the story yet, from the Holy Spirit. Her husband, Joseph, you notice they call him husband because, because it, technically they were betrothed. Being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, well, what's that all about? Well, <laughs> I asked this girl from Algeria, what would happen in your village back in, our, in Algeria if, uh, when, if a girl uh, uh, was uh, you know, betrothed to somebody and they, they ended up pregnant? Oh, she said. That's the, one of the, that's the worst thing that could possibly happen in our village. Uh, uh, they'd take the girl out and, and, they, and they'd publicly shame her. They'd cut her hair off and um, uh, she would be ostracized from the village and from her home. And, 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 and in the Middle East uh, back then, uh, uh, that kind of thing was practiced. Um, and there were many uh, women who, uh, who were publicly humiliated this way. But, but Joseph was a righteous man. That means he was a good man. And he, he was unwilling to put Mary through anything like that. So, he planned to dismiss, the word in Greek is divorce. He planned to divorce her quietly, undo the betrothal. But just when he had resolved to do this, he slept on it. An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Does God speak to us in dreams? Sometimes. And he said, Joseph, son of David, and the, the, the editor, he said, he wants you to understand that Joseph is of the lineage of King David. And this is Jesus' connection back to King David. Mary is from another tribe altogether. The angel says, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Go get her and bring her home to live with you. The final step in the betrothal. For the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Well, there's the punchline, you see. They had to add that other part earlier, so you, you, you listen long enough to get the punchline. Okay, um, and, uh, and then uh, she will bear a son. And you are to name him Jesus. Isn't that interesting? Jesus. Jesus is uh, the Greek word for the Hebrew word Joshua. And Joshua, a number of times, provided the leadership that saved Israel, saved the Jewish people. So he's named after Joshua, but he's given a Greek name. Because, you see, he's going to be, affect the whole world. And the whole world at that time spoke Greek. For he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. The prophet is Isaiah. And, and this is what the prophet said. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. 
When Joseph awoke from the sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and he took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he, because the father got to name the child, and, and, and is it an interesting, uh, because uh, back in the 50s, uh, it was a custom for the, the fathers to name their, child, their first son after themselves. You remember that? I'm a junior. Uh, there, there were juniors back then. Uh, uh, that's what they normally did back then. Uh, by rights, uh, the firstborn son should have been Joseph. But he obeyed God and named him Jesus. And he named him Jesus. 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 Sometimes... The unexpected happens. A friend moves away. A parent dies. The loss of a job, a home, an investment. A relationship changes or ends or begins. And our reaction always seems to be fear. Fear is not my friend. But sadly, fear has been my companion for many, many years. In a strange way, it comforts me to know that Joseph was afraid. For what, why else would the angel have said, do not be afraid? How about you? Are, are you well acquainted with fear? I wonder. I mean, look at things from Joseph's point of view. He's worked hard to learn a trade. He has his own house. He's respected in the community. He's a good man. It's time to marry and have a family, and he becomes betrothed to a poor girl in the village who is known for spinning wool. Uh, uh, she, she is young, but she, she'll be a good, she comes from a good family. She'll make a good wife. And the families agree, and Mary and Joseph are betrothed. They are promised in marriage. It can't be undone except by a legal divorce. There's always a waiting period in these betrothal situations, and perhaps Mary was too young at the time of the betrothal. It's hard to know. There, there, there could have been a number of reasons, but they weren't, he, he didn't go get her and bring her home to live with him. They were in this waiting period after the official betrothal is announced by the families, before the traditional village parade. Yes, they had a parade. They'd follow the groom to the, uh, the bride's house, and the bride would come out, and um, they would um, uh, uh, sometimes uh, follow the bride and groom back to the groom's house, and sometimes they'd carry the bride and groom back to the groom's house. This still happens in Eastern Europe. So, but it hasn't happened here. The traditional village parade following the groom to the, bride, to the bride's house and then getting her and then following the groom and the bride back to the groom's house. Shh. It was just an ordinary day. Just an ordinary day for a carpenter. Breakfast, then working as the village carpenter working. You know how it goes. Lost in thought. The news spread like wildfire through the village. Mary's with child. Joseph hears the news from one of the village gossips, no doubt. His jaw drops. He is stunned. But at the birth of Jesus, sorry, somebody shuffled the pages. <laughs> I wonder who that was. <laughs> There's a gremlin that lives in this building, you know, <laughs> who moves things. <laughs> Joseph knows he's not the father. Imagine how painful, how confused, how hurt. Many men, many men would be filled with anger, demand satisfaction, and a public humiliation. Shh. We can know for sure that Joseph loved Mary, for he did not want her to suffer the shame of public humiliation and public repudiation, which was his right to demand. No. He decided to divorce her quietly, to have the betrothal dissolved as if it never, hap never happened, to not make a fuss. 
Whatever anger he may have felt was overpowered and suppressed by his love for Mary. He wished no suffering to come upon her because of anything he might say or do. Joseph was a good man. After he made his decision, he did something very wise. He slept on it. <laughs> uh, that's good advice, you know. I wish you know, I'd, I'd taken it more often in my life. <laughs> he slept on it. Before you make an important decision, it's good to sleep on it. For sometimes in our sleep, you see, the mind works to resolve the issue. Or is it that God has an opportunity to embed a message in a dream? Or plant a thought? Or whisper? Joseph's dream. An angel appears to him in his dream. Do not be afraid. Ah, God knew what was in his heart. His heart was full of love. But God also knew that Joseph was about to do something based on fear. Perhaps he was afraid of what others might say, think of him or say. Perhaps he, he, he was a, a, a afraid of breaking a tradition. It, 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 traditions are powerful things, you know. Or maybe, like me and you, he was just afraid of the unknown. After the angel calms his fears, something mysterious is revealed in his dream. Something that can only be approached with great love and perfect trust. Mary has not been unfaithful to you. The child conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. A miracle. Ah, the intervention of the divine into the ordinary is happening, and God wants Joseph to be a part of it. Have you come to church today to calm your fears, to renew your trust in God, to hear a word from God? God is communicating to us all the time. If we'll only listen with ears of faith, with the openness of faith, the sound of the Holy Spirit rushing by, leaving a thought in our mind. What you seek, why? It's everywhere. It's in the scripture. We see it in the circumstances of our lives. We sense it in our quiet time, our prayers, our reflections, our, our, our meditations. And sometimes it just comes out of the mouth and actions of everyday people around us. So, here it is again, part of the gospel message, hear the word of the Lord, do not be afraid, trust God, miracles happen. Repeat after me, do not be afraid, trust God. Miracles happen. There being no female present in the dream to give him specific directions, the angel made it plain to him what God wanted him to do. <laughs> Go get Mary! <laughs> Ignore the wagging tongues and the gossip makers. Be bold. Do not be afraid. Trust God. Miracles happen. Go get Mary! And I like the way the story ends. It says, when he awoke. Now, 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 just reflect on that for a minute. Imagine this now. When he awoke, he did as the angel commanded him. That is, he roused up the whole village, organized the parade, boldly stepped out in faith, and led a parade over to Mary's house early in the morning before breakfast, knocked on the door. They come to the door. He's here to pick you up, Mary. <laughs> After receiving divine direction, Joseph didn't let any grass grow under his feet. He did what God commanded him, and he did it ASAP. That is, he did it immediately upon waking. One thought, one mission, get Mary and bring her home. No hesitation, no going to therapy to discuss the dream. Just going to get Mary, he just went and got her. Now, imagine for a minute Mary's surprise. Joseph's at the door. Oh no, what's going to happen? 
And the next thing she realizes, she's being carried through the streets to her new home with the sun barely up in the sky. And I like to think, I like to think that Joseph gently sat her down at the kitchen table and said to her, so, what do you want for breakfast? I know that's what Jeff Sterick would have said. <laughs> then the scripture writer wants you to understand something that Mary and Joseph were a real couple, a real husband and wife, for the, the writer insists on saying that they did not have marital relations until after Jesus was born. And the plain meaning of that being that they did have marital relations after Jesus was born. Doesn't it make you feel good that Jesus had normal parents? <laughs> and was part of a normal family and experienced everything about family life that we experience. Don't be confused. Neither Mary nor Joseph were divine. They were people just like us. But at the birth of Jesus, the divine became flesh in a real and a loving family. So, you came to church today to touch the divine in some way, to, to communicate with the divine, and to hear wisdom and direction from a divine source. So here it is. Once more, repeat after me. Do not be afraid. Trust God. Miracles happen. By suppressing fear and boldly acting out of love, Joseph was part of the miracle of Jesus' birth. Think of it. Because he trusted God and obeyed God, Joseph received the great blessing, the great honor, the great privilege of serving as Jesus' earthly father. Husband, father, teacher, carpenter, protector. Is it, is it any wonder that Joseph is universally respected and admired? I'm looking for the last page. Oh dear. Well, if Paul can do it, I can do it too. Yeah. <laughs> There's no last page. <laughs> Thank you, God, for not letting me waste time on that last page, because this is where you wanted me to end the sermon. I see. I get it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, one more time. Embed it in your mind. Keep it with you. Draw it up when you need it. One more time. One more time. Do not be afraid. Trust God. Miracles happen. Amen.